Second Chronicles 28. <clears throat> Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem, Judah, south. But he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord, like David his father. So here's one of the kings in Judah. He hasn't done right. For he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel. He's gone up north. Instead of doing right like David, he's gone and gotten worse. Israel's never right with God, never their kings. They got the golden calves. They got the Baal. They got the Balaam. They got, you know, well, Jezebel's long ago. But, I mean, it's just wickedness. And you're taking people who are supposed to be right with God, and they went and got the world. That's today. So he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel and made also molten images that would be metal image, metal images, molten, you molt them down, for Balaam. Again, Balaam is plural gods. You got Baal, the sun god. You got Asherah, the moon god. What, you know, all kinds of names she has. And you have the little stars, which are their children, sex worship. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnon. I mean, we read about Uzziah. He went into the, the holy place. This king is just doing it wherever he feels like it. And not only just anywhere he feels like, the, the valley of the son of Hinnon and burnt his children in fire. This is uh, Molech. This is taking your children and th this mechanical arms of this great big metal god that has a fiery furnace that with those arms would mechanically take the children and just throw them into his belly and they would be offering to the gods to the people imagine a god claiming i want your child and you say well god did that with abraham and isaac i god was not ever going to have isaac to be killed god was never going to allow abraham to kill his son he was tempting him and you would call this murder. And you say, well, you know, B.C., before Christ, you know. They do that in India today. I am told by uh, missionaries that are going over to India that they got these gods that come down the street and one of them is an elephant and they take their babies and throw them under the wheels of that elephant god. A.D., this side of Calvary. It's a religion. And when you get a specific church who's got priests, and women followers and you tell the men you can't marry and you tell the women you can't marry and they meet rendezvousing because you know men and women they got that that sexual desire and when they come together and accidentally a child's produced well that you take that child and you would give it to the gods but you know you're just hiding secretly the relationship i mean it's going on in that church today but they're having male and male which is unseemly Nothing new under the sun. After the abominations of the heathen, Gentiles, which the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. These were the things that the, that the people in the land of Israel's land were doing before Israel came. And this is why God said, you wipe them all out. Now, they did not wipe them all out. And here the religion stays. And man goes to the lowest common denominator. He will go more towards Satan than he will towards God. Because his heart is vile. And his mind is violence. God in the Bible has told us. So he's got a religion. Let's see what God thinks of this religion. Wherefore the Lord his God, God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Solomon, delivered him into the hand of the king of Syria. Fine. You don't want me? You want other gods? I'm calling in your enemy. If you sure want God to be your enemy, go and worship religion. You will sure enough have God as your enemy. He that has not the Son, John said, shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. And they smote him, as Ahaz and the men that were with him, and carried away a great multitude of them captives. And brought them to Damascus. It's funny, at Damascus, that's where Paul was going. And he was also delivered in the hand of the king of Israel, north. 
So God sends Syria. Syria, I want you to go get them. I want you to go punish them. I want you to go chastise them. Yes, sir, God. Israel, he has no business being with you guys. You guys are wicked. I want you to step in the picture, too. He's getting it from all sides. who smote him with a great slaughter. That's Israel North. For Pekah, this is the Israeli North king that murdered the king so he can have the throne. Pekah, son of Remaliah, slew in Judah, that's south, 120,000 in one day. Why? Because they got religion. God said to the enemies of Judah, go get them and kill them and take them captive. You want, to, you want God mad at you? Go with religion. That's the best thing. Take any religion you want. And you got God as your enemy. Which were all valiant men. So these were mighty soldiers, mighty army men, and they were killed in one day. God reduced the military force. You're not going to fight. you got strength in great numbers. you got such great men. you got the elite of the elite. See what I do in my anger. Because they, and this is because this is the reason, they have forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. There you go. A civil war. Israel's is battling Judah. That's a civil war. Syria has come into the battle. That's a war. He's got two wars going on at one hand right now. Why? Because he told God, I don't want you. I don't need you. I got my religion. I'm going to violate your commandments. I'm going to violate your word. All right? Here comes the wrath. And God is chastising because he wants Judah to do right. He say, this is a hard butt kicking, but uh, using a rod on the butt for correction, but God's trying to get their intention for good. But it's not working. So number two, you learn, if you want to make God manage, you go ahead and serve religion. Number two, you may see somebody who's lost and you may pray for them. You may see God take them down. You may see God give them stuff in their veins like, this is going to do it. This is it. They're going to turn to God. And I know full well of seeing this kind of act yet yeah, still can happen. They just outright will not listen to God. They will not give heed. They'll still continue in their wicked ways. This is man's heart. This is not everybody loves God. Anybody who says everybody loves God has not done a public ministry and has not read their Bible. Ahaz does not love God. He never will. And Zerachai, a mighty man of Ephraim, that's also the children of Israel, of Joseph, slew Manasseh, the king's son. Killing your children? All right, I'll have Manasseh come in and kill one of your sons. He may be, uh, and there's no record what Manasseh, he may be the favorite son of the king. You don't know. And Azariakim, the governor of the house, the guy who's like Joseph was in Potiphar's house. This is what uh, Atherkin would be. He is in charge of the house of Ahaz and God said, you're gone. Your son and your servant is gone. And Elkayim, Elkayim, that was next to the king, his best friend. Because you have forsaken me, I brought the Syrians in. There's captivity, there's death. I brought Israel in, there's captivity, and there's death. I have brought Ephraim in, and there is death of your son, your, your, your personal person that takes care of your whole house, and your best friend. I just ruined your day because you don't have anything to do with me. You know, kind of upsetting this thing. Here's a dead son. Here's a man that who's in charge of his entire house. Now he's dead. Now he, he, he's. What do I do? What else is going? Things are not going to work right for a while. And then here's his best friend. He's gone. And the children of Israel, North, carried away captive of their brethren, Judah. Two hundred thousand. Women, sons, and daughters, and took also much spoil from them and brought the spoil to Samaria. 
They're taking gold, they're taking silver, they're taking whatever they can, they're taking people. Because they have forsaken God. Now the king not only lost his son, not only has his army been wiped out, not only is his best friend gone, not only the ruler of his house is, uh, is gone, but the people of Judah are now lamenting because people are dead. And their loved ones have been taken away captive. Because they've forsaken God. So you want to make God angry? Get a religion. Scripture. But a prophet of the Lord was there. Whose name was Oben. Oded. And he went out before the host that came to Samaria. He meets the Israel army coming back from Judah. The Israeli army that's coming back from Judah has the men, the women, and all the spoil. And said unto them, Behold, because the Lord God of your fathers was wroth with Judah, angry, he has delivered them into your hand. There you go. You want to go against me? You don't want to do right? I'll turn the enemy into your hand. Even if it's your own family. I've already sent the enemy of the Syrians. I'll send your own family in to get you. That's a loving God that we have. It's a holy and righteous God. He can't allow sin. He has delivered them into your hand, and ye have slain them in a rage that reaches up unto heaven. That battle was so bad. That battle was so so fierce. It reached up to God, and God saw it. Not that God doesn't see everything, but the importance of this battle and this fighting, it just came to God. Like the wickedness of Sodom came up to the ears of God. Now here's his message. And now ye purpose to keep under the children of Judah and Jerusalem. All right, the people you got taken captive for bondmen and bondwomen unto you. You're going to make them slaves. But are there not with you, even with you, sins against the Lord your God? What you want to do with those captives? You want to make them slaves. God says that's a sin. What you're thinking about right now, you're sinning. Now, now look, now look. You conquered and destroyed Judah. Thank you. But when it comes to those people you got right now, what you want to do with them, that is not the battle, not the fighting, not the killing. I told you to do that. But what you want to do with the captives, that's a sin. You're not supposed to do that to your brethren. Remember when you served in Egypt with rigor? Remember, you're not supposed to do that. So he speaks on. Now hear me, therefore. Listen to me. And deliver the captives again. Bring them back. Return them. Which you have taken captive of your brethren. They're Jewish. They're Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For the fierce wrath of God is upon you. For what? Fighting Judah? No. Taking the spoils of Judah? No. What's God angry with you? Because you're taking those captives and what you want to do with them. You know how angry God was with Egypt for doing what they, what they did to his people? He destroyed them. When it came to the point when Pharaoh said, go, get out of here. The Bible thinks it says with haste, Israel, uh, Egypt told them to leave. Verse 12. Now this is the rebellious Israel nor that doesn't want to have anything to do with God then certain of the heads of the children of Ephraim Azariah the son of Johanan look God's naming them Berechiah the son of Misha Malamoth and G Hezekiah the son of Shalom and Amazah the, the son of Hedalia stood up against them that came from the war so these three men they stand up okay stop they stopped the, the troops of Israel in their tracks and said unto them, You shall not bring the captives hither. Now look at this. Israel has gone against God and no king has ever gotten right in Israel. They're, they're listening to the prophet. Don't tell me God didn't send a prophet to Ahaz. I know he did. 
But here's his problem. He says, you got to be, God is angry with you for what you want to do with those people. And they heard the preacher and they said, all right, stop. Shall not bring the captains hither, for whereas we have offended against the Lord already. What's he already? Well, we got the gods, we got these gods, we got the, the women gods, we got the cows, we got everything. We don't need this preacher adding to us because what we want to do to our brethren. You intend to add more to our sins and to our trespass. For our trespass is great. <laughs> Look at them acknowledging their sins of Israel. That has not happened. The army's like, man, we've sinned against God, and this is going to break the, the straw on the camel's back, and we're in trouble. That's how fierce this battle of the Syrians and Israel was in Judah. If God sent us to do that to Judah and the destruction that happened, man, we got a mighty God. What we did to our brethren, we got a mighty God. That's how fierce that battle was. Even Israel who's wrong, they're repenting right now. For our trespass is great, and for there is fierce wrath against Israel. There's been fierce wrath against Israel. So the armed men left the captives and the spoil before the princes and all the congregation. Here comes the military leader. They're coming up to their captain. Here's the captive woman I got. Here's the captive man I got. Here's the captive family I got. Here's the gold I found. Here's some bread. Can I? I love this bread, but I'm, here it is. They're turning the, the military men are turning everything into their officers. And as they're walking away from their officers, heading back home to Israel, they're carrying nothing from Judah. And the men which were expressed by name, or renamed them, verse 12, rose up and took the captives of Judah and with the spoil clothed all that were naked among them. They got naked people running around. They grabbed them when they were in the bed. They grabbed them when they were in the shower. There were people at this time, they just, all right, you're coming, we're going. I don't have no clothes on. I don't care, move it. And the captains are named, verse 12, there are spoils of clothes. They're taking those clothes that have been returned to go back, and they're clothing the, the captains. Say, does, does this fit you? All right, it's yours. This is, the, this is the enemy that God has spoken to by a prophet that is angry with Judah. Among them, they, they arraigned them and shod them. That's the first time that word shows up, and that's the clothes, the, the, the particular expression about the shod sandals or shoes. They don't even have their shoes. They turn over here. Have we got any shoes in that pile of stuff over there, sandals? Yep, we got plenty of them. All right, go see what's his name over there, and he'll fit you for sandals. You need a robe. That guy over there has got robes. Are you hungry? That guy's got bread over there. Go see, and probably by name. These people were going to be slaves. They were captives. They are enemies of God. And God took the enemies of God. Of God and to, No, you can't do that. You got to treat them with some mercy. And gave them to eat and to drink and anointed them. Took oil and, you know, washed their face, anointed their faces. And carried all the feeble of them upon asses. You too old, too old to walk? Are you lame? You can't you can't walk? Uh, bring the ass over here. All right, put her up on that ass and carry her back. That guy has no has no legs. Bring the ass over here. Put him up on the ass and bring him back. Elderly. They were going to take elderly people and bring them for, for service and for work. Feeble. And brought them to Jericho. They're going past Judah. They're going past Jerusalem. They're going down by Judah, the cursed city. That does not bring remembrance. This is the city that Joshua cursed. Brought them to Jericho, the city of palm trees. 
to their brethren, and they returned to Samaria. They listened to the prophet. Judah didn't. Let's keep reading. At that time, the king Ahaz, here he is, said, said yeah, send unto the king of Assyria to help him. Can we look at chapter 26, verse 7 real quick? Chapter 26, verse 7. And God helped him against the Philistines. Can we look at 1831? The history of, of Judah, 1831. There's other places, but these two. 1831. At the end of the verse, and the Lord helped him. King Ahaz says, I need help. Assyria, help me. He still hasn't turned to God. And if you don't want help from God, number three, get your enemy to help you out. Watch what happens. For again, the Edomites, that's uh, Esau, they're mad at Israel already. That blessing, the pot of beans. Esau's never forgiven Israel for that. Jacob, his brother, had come and smitten Judah. All right, here is the Syrians. They're coming. Here comes Israel. They come in. Now the Edomites have come in. He's got enemies coming from the north. He's got enemies coming from the north. He's got enemies coming from the northeast. Three bands of army has come into Judah. And instead of turning to God for help, he turns to Assyria. Assyria is the enemy. Assyria is going to take Israel north and bring them in captivity. They're not friends of Israel. For the Edomites had come to smitten Judah and carried away captives. Syria's taken captives, Israel's taken captives, but released them, and the Edomites are taken captives. The Philistines, oh, they're on the west. They've always been in Israel. They have been so happy for God to say, go get them. Also invaded the cities of the low country, that's south of Judah, and the south of Judah, and had taken Beth Shemesh, that's a city, Ajalon, that's a city, and Gadaroth, that's a city, Shoko, that's a city, with the villages thereof, and Tina, that's a city, with the villages thereof, and Gizmo, Gizmo, that's a, that's a city, and the villages thereof, and they dwelt there. They come into the land of Judah, they conquered the cities, and not only did they conquer the cities, they settled themselves in those cities. We've had kings in the Lord has gone and conquered cities, and they have taken over those cities. But when you're against God, you lose. You lost a whole bunch of people, there are people dying, and you lost property. My advice is to you is not to go against God and not to go with religion, and don't trust other men. For the Lord brought Judah low. See, God did it. Why? Here's a because of Ahaz, king of Israel, for he had made Judah's naked that don't mean naked unclothed that means in the eyes of god you're not doing right and transgress sore against the lord now oh, that's a hard word and tilgrath peneser king of Assyria, came unto him and distressed him but strengthened him not so he's just getting from all sides there's this battle and war and conflict because he's going against god and Ahaz, look what he does, took away a portion out of the house of the Lord and out of the house of the king and of the princes. Now he's going to the princes, stealing, and gave it to the king of Assyria, but he helped him not. He pays Assyria and they still conquer. He ran to the house of God to get gold, silver, and other stuff. And he, he ran to his house and he ran to the prince's house. He gave the money to the king of Assyria and guess what? King of Syria says, thank you very much. Keep going at it, boys. Keep conquering them. Do you think he get right? Let's see if he gets right. 22. And in the time of his distress, that sounds good, did he trespass yet more against the Lord? This is that King Ahaz. That King Ahaz, this is a guy who would not learn a lesson. I can think of a couple people I know who have not learned the lesson of salvation. 
and I've seen the Lord work in their life. I've seen the Lord tear down their life. I've seen the Lord attack them. They get a little hope, and they get a little glimmer. They get a little, you know, up from the from the ashes, and they go against God. They won't do nothing. They keep going away from God. For he sacrificed, here we go, unto the gods of Damascus. <laughs> he has added more to his sin. While the people are fighting him, he goes to Damascus and gets there. Why does he do this? Which smote him. This is the gods of the Syrians in Assyria. I like your gods. Why do you like the Assyrian gods? Because they beat my butt. So he has just made an open testimony. My God is the one that's destroying me. Yes, he is. But he's destroying you for good that you may get right, not for you to be defeated. At this moment, Ahaz just said, Lord, you're the God that's destroying me. Not, oh, Assyria, you got the gods that are greater than my God. No, not that. For he sacrificed in the gods of the masses which smote him. And he said, because the gods of the kings of Syria helped them. Then we look at two verses about God helping Israel. Therefore will I sacrifice to them that they may help me. You're stupid. Don't you know the history of the kings before you? Must not. He has totally, outright, has rejected God completely and has gone for more gods. Not only Balaam, but wherever the gods of the Syrians are, wherever the gods of Damascus are, that they may help me. But they were the ruin. That's the, that is the only time that word shows up, ruin. No, that's the first time that word shows up. I changed my, my marking. That is the first time that word shows up, ruin. So the first time ruin shows up in the Bible, it's a man that's going against God and all Israel. And he has gathered together the vessels of the house of God, going to church, and cut in pieces the vessel of the house of God. He's got to be angry with God. Walks in that house and he's ripping everything up, tearing everything up, chopping everything up. And shut the doors of the house of the Lord. He closed the church down. You're not coming to serve this God no more. This God can't help me. He ain't going to help you. Close the doors of the temple. He hates God. And he made him altars, plural, in every corner of Jerusalem. Where do you see this today? In Daytona Beach, you can drive down almost every other road and see some kind of church. Baptist, Congregational, Catholic, uh, Churches of God, Church of Christ, Church of that, anything. He's got a yellow page full of churches. And they're called altars. Because do not all these churches, don't they have one thing in common? Don't they have altars? You just got walls and a in the, in the ceiling above them. This guy in Jerusalem, every several corner, or every corner, this one says every corner. Go walking down the street. Here's an altar to this guy. Go down, walk a little bit further. Here's a, you know, instead of red lights and green lights, he's got altars on every corner. Every corner? That means when you got an intersection of of two streets that meet, you've got a corner with four altars there. And the house of God has been closed. America's like that. We got churches on almost every block. And in every several city, here's a city, not that one, next city, not that one, that city. Of Judah, he made high places to burn incense. Unto other gods. And this would be a national god. 
and in these areas of, of the this country where we are and the surrounding areas of the Middle East, every city was given to a particular god. Your of Chaldees, where, where Abraham came from, that was given to the moon god. That's why the city, the, the example of him was the, the crescent moon. Ephesus was given to great Diana. And if you do a search on the internet, you will find that these cities, you'll find they had a god or a goddess. In Italy, they got the Pope. And he has established moon gods, sun gods, and star gods. In the cities of Judah, that is supposed to be given to God. He has gone totally far away from what God wanted him to do. You want to have God as your enemy? Get all kinds of religion, do whatever you want, go against God. You got an enemy. And provoke the anger of the Lord God of his fathers. Just because your church has an altar doesn't mean it's right. It may be another God. Now the rest of the acts of all his ways, oh boy, he had many ways. First and last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah in Israel. Ahaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city, even in Jerusalem. But they brought him not into the sepulchres of the kings of Israel, they knew this guy was wicked. You don't belong there with those kings. The people acknowledged it. Give you your own little burial ground. And Hezekiah, his son, reigned in his stead. What a wickedness. What a violence. And here is somebody that God has worked on. He is chastising. He is punishing to get him to do right. And he just went the other way. It pictures a child that won't listen. And then the consequences. 